Luke chapter number 16. Verse number 19. Luke 16, 19. There was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen and fared sumptuously every day. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus which was laid at his gate full of sores and desiring to be fed with the crumbs which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. It came to pass the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried, and in hell he lift up his eyes. Being in torments, and seeth Abraham afar off, and Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me, and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue, for I am tormented in this flame. But Abraham said, Son, remember that thou in thy lifetime receivest thy good things, and likewise Lazarus evil things. But now he is comforted, and thou art tormented. And beside all this, betwixt between us and you, there is a great gulf fixed, so that they which would pass from hence to you, to you cannot, neither can they pass to us that would come from thence. Then he said, I pray thee therefore, Father, that thou wouldest send him to my father's house. For I have five brethren, lest he may testify to them, lest they also come into this place of torment. And Abraham saith unto him, They have Moses and the prophets, let them hear them. And he said, Nay, Father Abraham, but if one went to them from the dead, they will repent. And he said unto him, If they hear not Moses and the prophets, neither will they be persuaded, though one rose from the dead. Father, bless this holy word now, messenger. Use me as a messenger this morning. I need anointing. I need your presence. I need the power of the Holy Ghost of God to send this forth in Jesus' name. Amen. You can be seated. You might ask yourself this question, well, why is it? that Moses and the prophets is so powerful because there can be deception in the resurrection of the dead, but there is no deception in, deception in the living Word of God. The Bible's alive. What you're going to hear from me this morning as I preach this message is alive. It speaks to you and requires an answer. It speaks to the depth of your soul. It speaks to you in a way that nothing else can speak to you. Once you've ever heard the Word of God in your heart, then you'll never be the same again. Not just words. This is not just another book. There's no other book like this book. So what I'm going to preach to you this morning from Luke chapter number 16 is the word of Almighty God coming forth from the mouth of the Lord Jesus Christ of all people. He makes it very plain and very clear. One of these days you're going to die, my dear friend. And when you die, you may, some of you may in this house today, call yourself atheists or agnostics and say, well, when you die, you're dead like a dog and that's it. There's nothing beyond the grave. What you base that on is entirely funny, it's crazy, it's irrelevant, I have no idea where you got the idea that you don't know, that you say that there's nothing beyond the grave. You'll find out, you'll find out that when you leave this body, that you're still alive, alive in the sense that you're conscious, alive in the sense that you see, alive in the sense that you hear, that you're, that you're aware of your surroundings, and so you're gone. You're gone from the earth, you're gone from the body, but you are every bit alive. And so death will come upon some of you overnight. Death will come upon some of you all of a sudden. Death will come Come upon some of you over a protracted period of time. You don't know when it's coming, but make sure of this, my dear friend. It is coming, and you will die. For those of you that aren't saved, that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, it'll be the greatest day of shock in your life. You will find out that there's something there beyond the grave. You'll find out that there's some place that you never in your life imagined that it could exist, but it is there. It is hell in the Bible. It is a place called hell that is a place of torment, and you'll find yourself there. What a sad, 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 sad thing to think that you've left this world and left this life, and there you go off into a place called hell. You say, preacher, do you really believe in hell? You better believe it. But about eight to nine preachers in this country don't believe it 
because you never hear them talk about it. They don't warn people about it. But you need to be warned about it. He said, what should it profit a man if he gained the whole world and lose his own soul in hell? And that's what's going to happen. Maybe to some of you in this house today. But here's what you'll discover. As you wake up there in that place called hell, you'll, defy, you'll find out that you're in what's called the bottomless pit in the Word of God. You'll find yourself falling. You'll find yourself falling deeper and deeper and deeper into the pit of hell. It'll be a place that you can't imagine in your wildest dreams. There's no way that the human mind could ever conceive of a place called hell. But it's there just as surely as you hear me this morning. You'll find yourself falling, falling into hell. You may scream and you say, where am I? What's around me? What, what is this place? And you may scream it to the top of your lungs. You may be trying to come to grips with the reality that you never imagined in your life. But I'll tell you right now, make no mistake about it. In time, you'll know where you are. Where am I? You scream. Where am I? And there are those of you that will still probably deny. You'll say there is no hell. This must be a dream. I must be in some kind of a stay, a catatonic state. My mind must be, I must be losing my mind. And some of you can deny it, but denying it will not change the reality. You're in hell. And you're there. And you're there. And you're in hell. And you continue to fall. Down you go. Deeper and deeper into the pit. Some of you mocked. Some of you made fun. Some of you cursed. Some of you denied the Bible. You thought you were big and tough. You thought that you were really something strutting around on this earth. And you said, there is no God. But you'll find out, my dear friend, there is a God. There is a God. And surely, as you hear me this morning, and you continue to fall, you're in hell. Remember the words as they bounce off the walls of hell. And it says this, but I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. That's the living word of the living God. Make no, make no mistake about it, my dear friend. You will fear him. When you find out that you're in a place that you can't escape from, you can't buy your way out of it, you can't pray your way out of it, you can't do anything to get out of there, you're surrounded, you're a hold of it, something is taking you and it's dragging you down into the bottomless pit. You'll be burning flames around you. Flames all over the place. And the rich man that I read in Luke chapter number 16 said, I am tormented in this flame. You say, Preacher Lawson, good night. What you're preaching to me this morning is a horrible thing. I'm preaching the Bible to you, friend. We live in a make-believe religious world in America. We live in funny land. We live in a feel-good country. And they've never heard what I'm preaching to you today. But it is as real as you're real. It's more real than you are because it's been around for a long time and down you go. You fall, you fall, you fall and you continue to fall. What's the sound you hear coming up from beneath you? What is that sound you hear as you go deeper and deeper into the pit? It gets worse and it gets worse. There is a sound coming from the pit of hell. It's called the lowest hell and it's not something you want to hear. It's a sound you've never heard before as it rises up from the lowest hell. You say to yourself a thousand times, ten thousand times, what can I do to get out of here? Where can I go? Can I pray? Will God let me out of this place? But nothing can change your destiny. You made your choice on the earth. You chose here. You rejected here. You said no to God here. And now you are where you chose to go. You're in hell. The Bible talks about the sorrows of hell. It says the sorrows of hell have encompassed me. It means that while you're down there falling, while you're falling deeper and deeper into the curse of damnation, the sorrows of hell will encompass you. One of them is lost opportunities. How you'd love to come back to the church house and pray. Wouldn't you love to be given an opportunity to be born again? Can. And you want that with all of your heart, but you can't have it. Lost family members that you'll never see again. Broken, split apart, and
And here you are falling into hell and down you go. You fall deeper. Lost hope. Hope is gone. No hope. No hope. You take hope away. That's hell itself. Just to lose your hope is to lose is to have is to be in hell to think it never will get any better and that's why you're in hell your mind is raging now you're screaming inside you're going deeper and deeper you begin to accept the fact that you're damned there's no hope for you you're one of the condemned and hell the bible says has moved itself to receive you that means that you have a special place in hell that's reserved for you like you would reserve a hotel or a motel you've got a place in hell reserved well preacher how can I stay out of there good question the Lord Jesus Christ and the blood of Christ can keep you out of hell but it's too late for you you've made your choice listen to the scripture as it bounces off the walls of hell it is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God amen I would that you'd think on that I would that you'd meditate on that a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God amen you're a fool if you think that you have any authority or power or can do anything against the power of almighty God and you continue to fall and you continue to fall and you continue to fall head over heels you go you scream you beg you wail you gnash your teeth but you're not the only one screaming and wailing and gnashing of the teeth you find out that they're around you you discover they're all over the place you realize that hell is populated yay by the millions and you scream again you beg you fall it's too late for you what a horrible thing and deeper you go into hell the Bible said hell from beneath is moved for thee to meet thee at thy coming that almost gives it a personality personified in other words in other words it says of an inanimate place that has no life of its own that it's got a mind that it's coming for you say where is hell preacher tell me something where is it it's the end of a Christ rejecting life that's where it is and you'll surely go there some of you in this house today God's busy finally beginning to speak to for the first time in a long time or maybe the first time you've ever opened your heart to God's Word and you're beginning to think I don't want to go where that preacher's talking about is that really in the Bible you better believe it's in the Bible the Lord Jesus Christ said more about hell than anybody that ever walked the face of this earth and you continue to fall and you continue to fall deeper and deeper and deeper into the pit of hell the Apostle Peter said this he said these are wells without water clouds that are carried with a tempest to whom the midst of darkness is reserved forever Oh, what about that? The midst of darkness. A place encompassed with total darkness. There's nothing to see but darkness. And the only sight that you'll ever see is one that has light of its own. And there is no other light. The only light there is, amen, is Almighty God. Amen. Hear me today. Everything else wallows and dies in its own darkness. There is no darkness outside of the Almighty. And so it's dark and that pit. Peter said it is the midst of darkness there to be tormented forever and ever. You're beginning to change. So what's that? Well, that Bible tells me that the Lord Jesus Christ said I'm a worm and not a man. The image of God is what we're made in, but you're going to begin to lose that image. As you fall into the pit of the damned, that image of God will not be there. It will not, it will not, it will not ride in hell. The image of God is not in hell, but you are. And deeper and deeper you go, suffering torment, screaming and begging. You say preacher tell me something is that place near me well I'll tell you how near it is unto you David said in the Old Testament there is but a step 
between me and death that's that near to you. A heart stopping right now. Cardiac arrest. And it's over. There is no more chance. There is no more opportunity. And you continue to fall. Down you go. Down you go. Then all of a sudden you hear a voice. A voice of authority that you've never heard. A voice of authority that shakes the foundations of hell itself. The one that can speak life. The one that can speak damnation. The one that can save to the uttermost. And the one that will say to you, depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. I never knew you. It is that voice that reaches down into hell. It takes hold of hell. And hell comes up out into the light. You don't want the light. You hate the light. You despise it in this life. You'll despise it then. You're a child of darkness. You've always loved darkness. But you'll see the light. It'll be a brilliant light. It'll be a shining light so bright that you can't stand it. And there are going to be those around that light. Oh, think of it. As you come up out of the pit of hell, you'll hear a rushing sound like you've never heard before. What's that? That's the heavens and the earth fleeing away. That's when everything goes except for the creator the only one that lives all of creation will vanish away and there you'll stand who's that around you who are this multitude these are your victims murderer these are your victims rapist these are your victims you're going to face and if you're a baby killer 60 million of them will be standing there that day 60 million little children, babies, but no longer little babies. Now nah, they're fully grown, and you got to face them. That's going to be some hell for you there to look into the eyes of them. Maybe they may say to you, why did you kill me? Why didn't you give me an opportunity to live? Why did you jerk me from my mother's womb? Why did you do that to me? And then you go talk about love. You don't know what love is. When you killed an innocent baby. But that's not it. For that one that sits on the throne. You'll hear the words depart. Oh my. What if I fall on my knees preacher. What if I beg. Depart. Depart from me. Ye that work iniquity. In a hell prepared for the devil and his angels. I never knew you. And then. You go into the lake of fire. For hell itself has been taken away with the creation. What is that lake of fire? Preacher, don't have a clue, but it's a thousand times worse than hell. Amen. Into the lake of fire you go forever and ever. What about a thousand years from now, preacher? You're still in hell. Amen. A choice you make in this house, Amen. this day, can determine whether you wind up in the pit or you go up with the saints. The contrast could not be sharper. Amen. Heaven on one hand with the Lord Jesus and your loved ones. And hell and damnation on the other. Which one will you choose? Father, in thy name I pray. Use what I preached. Use it for the glory of God. I thank you for your presence. I thank you for your strength. And I pray for your power. Maybe somebody here, somebody over this internet, somebody watch this later. Somebody will be moved and stirred to be saved by your word. In Jesus' name. Heads are bowed this morning. Nobody looking. Would anybody in this, out, in this congregation here this morning say, Preacher, I want you to pray for me. I want you to pray for me. I'm worried. I'm scared. I don't know what to do. I may be with the one you're talking about. I may, be, I may be just a few heartbeats away from hell. Preacher, pray for me. I will. And I'll pray that you make the right choice. And I'll pray that you choose life. God bless you. There's a hand right there. God bless you. Anybody else raise your hand? God bless you back there. Another hand. God bless you over there. Another hand. Another hand. Pray, Christians. Pray. Pray, believers. Pray for these folks who raise their hand. He will not have any to be perished, but all to come to salvation. God bless you back there, my dear soul. Anybody else? Anybody else? Say, pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. I don't want to go to that place. And I'm not sure about it. I'm not absolutely certain that I'm going to heaven. I'm just not sure. I'm just not sure. Pray for me, preacher. Pray for me. Anybody else? Raise your hand. 
Father, I pray for these hands that went up, Lord. You're the God. You're the judge. You're the Savior of mankind. I'm the messenger. I'm done. I'm finished. But your word now has gone forth. And I pray that you produce, give fruit for the glory of God. Save souls. These people that raised their hand this morning, if they're, if they're not sure, I pray that they'd come today and make sure. I pray they'd come down here right now. Walk down here and let us open the word of God and spare them from hell and write their name in the Lamb's book of life before they walk out of this house today. In Jesus' name we pray.